Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the Athlon 3000G and Ryzen 7 5700G are on paper worlds apart. One has two cores, four threads, and the other has eight cores and 16 threads. In terms of actual processing power in games, the 5700G will, as expected, destroy the Athlon. We don't need to run a full benchmark suite in order to come to that obvious conclusion. Even when paired with a mid-range graphics card, such as an RTX 3050, the differences are clear to see, and while the 5700G has more to give, the Athlon is the limiting factor when paired with the card. Pairing it with a faster GPU would make little to no sense. That said, when part of a system that lacks a discrete graphics card, both of these CPUs, in most cases, are actually held back by the onboard graphics. The 5700G more so than the Athlon, but with no additional GPU in the PCIe slot, both of these processors have far less room to stretch their legs. This got me thinking about just how much performance difference there is between what is currently one of the best desktop APUs available and what is currently one of the weakest, when both are limited somewhat by their own integrated graphics. Of course, let's not forget that the Ryzen's onboard graphics are still better than the Athlon's and it has better and faster cores, but integrated graphics are integrated graphics, so maybe the gap won't be as significant as you're expecting. Wrong. Okay, so this, this is for a bit of fun more than anything else. Of course, the 5700G is better in every regard, but it's way more expensive. The 3000G can run even the newest of games with at least 30 FPS, albeit with some massive visual sacrifices. Sacrifices that weren't made here in the interest of a fair comparison. Even titles like Cyberpunk with the right tweaking can be made to run fairly smoothly with this dual core chip, even if the game isn't going to be very nice to look at at all. The further we get into this comparison, the more I wonder why I made this video, but I guess curiosity played a big part. At launch, the 5700G cost 359 US dollars, which is 7.3 times the Athlon 3000G, which had an MSRP of 49. I found that these days, here in the UK at least, a used 3000G is about 2.7 times cheaper than a used 5700G on eBay, and this price difference doesn't do too bad of a job of reflecting the performance differences either. The 5700G does usually offer double or better than double the performance of the Athlon. Current second-hand price is taken into consideration, of course. This is subject to change. The 3000G is now more expensive than it was on launch day, and the 5700G is cheaper. Of course, if it were me, I'd look for something at the sensible middle ground. Maybe a second-hand quad-core APU with eight threads. If it's just CPU power you're after, then it would be wise to forget the Athlon altogether and spend a little more on an i3. Even the Pentium G7400 will offer better performance, but that is sort of hard to justify in its own right, considering how closely it sits to the i3-12100F at the moment. New Ryzen's are out, or supposed to be out as well, like the 4100 and 4500, but from what I've seen, they aren't exactly brilliant. I've got a bit distracted while letting the benchmarks play, but with the comparative outcomes being sort of obvious and the conclusion drawn about three paragraphs ago, I feel as though I need to talk about what else I'd recommend, not just instead of the Athlon, but instead of the 5700G at the higher performance end of things too. The Ryzen, while it's a great chip with decent onboard graphics, it doesn't necessarily make too much sense if you're planning on getting a discrete graphics card. And now that stock and prices are improving every day, that's probably a strong possibility. I'd actually suggest looking at the Ryzen 5600 Non-X or i5-12400F, both of which offer fantastic performance for their respective prices. If you're partial to AMD, over Intel, get the 5600, or if Intel is a bit of you, then get the 12400F. Both CPUs are fairly evenly matched. You've also got to take into consideration motherboard prices, CPU intensive application performance if that's important to you, etc., and the actual price of the CPUs themselves where you live. I think what I've ended up doing here is comparing two processors that you shouldn't necessarily buy, not if you're going to get a discrete graphics card anyway. 
Circling around and going back to the point of this video, the 3000G and 5700G both offer surprising integrated graphics performance results in their own right. The 8-core Ryzen chip does better than I thought in those more intensive games like Cyberpunk for example which runs at over 40 FPS and going into this test I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting it either the other day when I tested the Minis 4 Mini PC that I borrowed this CPU from for this video. Even if we did have to make some big visual sacrifices, the performance is still, in my opinion, fairly impressive. On the other hand, we have the lower end or entry level 3000G, which will offer at least 30 FPS in older and less intensive games like Grand Theft Auto V and CSGO. Counter Strike actually gets over 60 FPS, in fact, and with more tweaking and a lower resolution, we can improve performance quite a bit, not to mention overclocking. Now overclocking can be applied to both integrated solutions here. Certain games won't be improved by overclocking the Athlon's Vega graphics because of the initial CPU limitation. I mean you can make the graphics as fast as you possibly can but with two cores and four threads well they're going to pose the biggest problem. Other games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Far Cry 6 which seem to be more GPU intensive will demonstrate some noticeable gains with a GFX clock speed increase to 1650 MHz up from the standard 1100 MHz out of the box. Again it's worth reiterating that the 5700G's graphics can also be tweaked but if you have a 3000G and are feeling a little sore about today's comparisons then you can certainly close the gap between the plucky entry level Athlon and the desktop APU King. You can't close the gap by a lot, but the improvements over stock 3000G iGPU speeds are very welcome. And this overclock was even achieved with a stock Ryzen stealth cooler, so there's no need to worry about forking out too much on an aftermarket one. With overclocking as simple as it is with the Athlon chip, it's definitely worth doing, even if you've had no previous OC experience. To wrap things up then, both of these CPUs are impressive in their own individual ways. Overclocking can definitely get the 3000G out of some sticky, unplayable scenarios, and if you're still holding out for that graphics card you want to drop in price or actually appear, then the Radeon graphics of the 5700G are still very much usable, even with newer titles. You'll certainly still have to make some visual sacrifices, but all in all, it's quite an impressive chip, even in 2022, but I do wish it would come down a little bit in price. That said, that's really all there is to this one. Thank you, as always, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this comparison that you probably knew the conclusion to from the first three seconds, but nonetheless, if you did enjoy this one, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you use either of these two chips and what you think of them down below, of course. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.